Away! A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! There's danger on the trail ahead! I'll Silver! Hi! A fat man seated at the table was writing hurriedly on a small slip of paper. Or perhaps it was merely by comparison that the paper seemed small. Everything in the room was dwarfed by the enormous bulk of the bearded fat man. Even Cass Gentry's six feet of height and his weight seemed like a miniature figure as he nervously waited for the writer to finish. Only the fat man's hands were of normal size. And now they folded the slip of paper quickly and beckoned to Cass Gentry. This is it, huh? The directions are all written down? The fat man didn't speak. He merely nodded his head in answer to Cass Gentry's question. For a moment, Cass seemed to be puzzled. Then he remembered that the fat man never spoke. His orders were always written. They were always obeyed. Oh. Oh, I see. This note's for Lacey. Uh, he's waiting outside. I'll give it to him. Lacey. Yeah? Come here. Yeah? What'd the fat man say? You know he never says anything. It's all written down right here. It's for you. Yeah, let me see it. Well? Yeah, I guess this is that gun hawk job I've been waiting for. When do you do it? Tomorrow morning. Out on the trail near Red Rock Basin. Well, do you know what he looks like? I mean, the gent you're supposed to... The fat man's got a good description of the critter. <laughs> he says he'd be riding a white stallion, that he's tall... Kind of lean-like, and you'll be wearing a black mask. That's right. This is the beginning of the jab the fat man's been planning for a long time. He's had Tex working on it for over six months. You'd better not miss. Listen, I've been pumping a Winchester for 20 years. I never miss. <laughs> Early the following morning, the Lone Ranger saddled his horse and prepared to leave the camp where he and Tonto and Dan had spent the last few days. See, big fella, I won't be gone long, Dan. You and Tonto can pack everything, and when I come back, we'll head south. Well, couldn't we go with you to see the sheriff? Then we could all go on together. No, Dan. The note that was given to Tonto yesterday, Sheriff Corbin wants me to meet him alone. 
on the trail by Red Rock Basin. Hmm. Why does he want to see you alone? I don't know. Red Rock isn't so far from here. I'll be back within an hour. There are two trail at Red Rock Basin. Which one lawman say to meet him? He didn't say, Tonto. I'll take one trail going over and the other coming back. I can't very well miss him that way. Ah. Come on, Silver. A high-powered rifle is a deadly weapon, especially when it's in the hands of an expert marksman such as Lacey Coleman. He rested the long blue barrel on the edge of a sandstone cliff that was high above the Red Rock Basin Trail. He smiled grimly as he trained his gun sights on the figure of a horseman who was tall and lean and who wore a black mask. Then with slow, steady pressure, he squeezed the trigger. (laughs) Ain't got time to go down there and see... But I'll lay ten to one, that one landed right between the eyes. Something must be wrong, Tonto. He said he'd be back within an hour, and that was three hours ago. It's almost dark. Well, maybe Lone Ranger talked to Lawman a long time. He might, but we've got everything packed. Let's ride down toward Red Rock. We'll meet him on a trail. Uh, him say we wait here. Oh, I know, but we'll save time by meeting him halfway. Come on. Uh, when Lone Ranger say wait, Tonto wait. All right, then. I'll ride alone. Come here, Victor. Uh, that not good, Dan. It's bad country for you to ride alone. <coughs> then why don't you come along with me? All right, Tonto go. Here, Scout. Maybe this make Lone Ranger plenty man. I know it won't. He'd be glad to see us. Come on, Victor. Get him up, Scout. Seems funny. We haven't seen any sign of him. Tonto, look. Ah, uh, man lie on trail. And look, his shirt, his head. It... Come on, Victor. Hurry. Get him up, Scout. Oh, oh Scout, hold fire, hold. Oh, Father. Tonto, it... Now, oh, we see. Pretty quick. Oh. He must have been. He... He's dead. Huh? Bullet hit him in the head. Oh. No, it can't be. I won't believe it. I... True. The Lone Ranger. We can't leave him here. No. It's silver. I wonder where he is. He wouldn't run off like an ordinary half-trained horse. In dark now. We put body on horse. Go back to camp. You help carry him? Of course I will. Body alone, Ranger. Sure. Just a minute. Uh. 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 Now what can we do, Tonto? Oh, Tonto, not know. Me not. Oh, somebody come. I don't care. Oh, Silver, hold on, hold on. Tonto. Kimo Sabi. Steady. Well, you two seem to be. Is in it a... you? Is it really you? What's the matter, Dan? Your face is as white as a ghost. One of us must be a ghost. Well, what do you mean? Kim Masabi, for the first time in life, Tonto not believe eyes. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late getting back. The sheriff didn't meet me. I waited for him on the upper trail, but then I find... What's wrong? If you're really you, who's he? Who? Over there. Ah. Why, it's a man dressed exactly like I am. Where did you... We find him on trail, dead. He looks like you, and he... The most amazing thing I've ever seen... This mask on, the man's a perfect double for me. Look, his hair grows exactly the same way as yours. And that line by his Bullet mouth... wound in the forehead. He died instantly. Where did you find him? Oh, golly, I... <laughs> Dan, can't you talk? <laughs> Gee, I... I guess I'm just too glad to talk. Where did you find this man, Toto? On trail to Red Rock. We go there to meet you. His shirt, hat, guns, a mask, everything is an exact counterpart of mine. 
I didn't see it. I wouldn't think such a thing could be possible. And why this happened, Kimosabe? Why a man try to look like you? He's done more than try. It's a perfect job. So perfect that I think he's fooled a murderer. He must have stopped a bullet that was intended for me. Gee, that's right. Oh, me not savvy. Neither do I, Tato. But I'm sure the note I received and the fact that this man was killed on the lower Red Rock Trail is more than coincidence. Me get note from man in cafe. Him say it from lawman. The note must have been faked. That's easy enough to understand. Why would crooks go to all this trouble and then kill the very man who sure. they... Sure. This fellow even fooled Tano and me. Maybe his pockets will tap. Here's a knife just like mine. Gee. Every other pocket is empty except a key with a metal tag on it. Huh. What's that for? A hotel key, Dan. The tag has a room number on it. Number 210, Cattleman's Hotel, Sand Springs, Texas. Oh, Sand Springs, town where me get notes. Yes, I know. Well, maybe when you tell the sheriff about this and about the No, note... Dan, I'm not going to see the sheriff right away. There's time enough for that later. Well, how about this dead man? We'll bury him here. Pretend it's me. You? Tonto, you're familiar with the town of Sand Springs? Ah. Uh. Is there a back entrance to the Cattleman's Hotel? Ah. Uh. Good. Then tonight, as soon as it gets dark, I'll go to room number 210 and wait. Wait for what? Whatever or whoever my double was going to wait for. We'll slip in the back door of the hotel here. It's easier this way. What's the room number? 210. Up one flight. Come on. Here it is. Let's go. Wait a minute. I'll take a squint through the keyhole. There's a lamp lit in there. Is he there? Yeah. There's somebody in there. He's got his back to the door. Now keep your gun handy. We'll play safe. I'm ready. Reach! I was wondering how long you were going to stand out there and talk before you came in. Still think you're a pretty smart dude, don't you, Tex? Not very. I was smart. I wouldn't be standing here with my back to you and with my hands up. All right. Put them down and turn around. We're just playing safe, that's all. Thanks. Tex, this is Lacey Coleman. Howdy. What? Well, he's wearing a mask and everything. Just like the Lone Ranger. Sure, what'd you expect? I never saw a better get up. Oh, I've been practicing. Ain't you, Tex? Quite a bit. Now, you can take off that mask now. Make no sense in wearing it all the time. No, I, uh... I think I'll keep it on so I'll get used to it. Well, yeah, maybe so. Well, come on, let's get going. Where? What do you think? Why did you come up here to Sand Springs? To meet you. Hmm. Tex, I worked with you for a year in El Paso. Remember? Yeah, I think I do. You think? Don't Stop you know... Stop gabbing. The fat man's waiting for us. Let's get out of here. Yeah. The fat man wants to see Tex. I'm sure of that. He can't be any more anxious than I am. Maybe. We'll go out the back way, Tex. You go first. Lacey and me will follow you. All right. Come on. Open the door. Yeah, I thought so. There's something wrong here. Keep your hands away from that hardware. Or I'll split your spine with a hunk of lead. What's wrong, Case? This critter reached for that doorknob with his right hand. And the Tex I know has been left-handed all his life. I use either hand. Yeah, maybe you do and maybe you don't. We'll let the fat man decide. Just don't try any tricks. And get moving. The curtain falls on the first part of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Under the drawn guns of Cass Gentry and Lacey Coleman, the Lone Ranger was led through back streets in the town of Sand Springs. Finally, they arrived at the doorway of a little shack on the edge of town. Is this where the fat man lives? This is where we meet him. Go on, open the door, Lacey. Not a very cheerful place. What's the table for? That's where the fat man sits. Now, you and Lacey stand right over there. Now, tell him we're here. We brought Tex. He'll be right out. Mm, a box of cigars on the table. Guess he'll try hey, one. Watch it. Here comes the fat man. <clears throat> this is Tex. At least he says it's Tex. Personally, I got my doubts. Hmm. Can't the fat man talk? He never talks. Why? That's his business. Whatever he wants to say, he'll write on a piece of paper, and I'll tell you about it. Well, I'm listening. He says you look like Tex, and he wants to know why I'm suspicious. Oh, are you? I told you. Because Tex is left-handed, and you... I said I used both hands. Look at this. Go on, light that cigar, Lacey. Huh? Well, sure. Well, I'll be shot the seagull right out of my hand. Snuffed out the match with his other gun. I'm sorry about breaking that mirror over there. I didn't intend to do that. Well, that's all right, Tex. I'm convinced you're plumb handy with a shooting iron in either hand. Good. Now, maybe you'll tell me what this is all about. Oh, sure, sure. Now, the fat man here's got a plan. That's why he wrote you the letter and told you to practice like the Lone Ranger. I see. Sheriff Corbin here in town knows the Lone Ranger. But I think your get-up will fool him. What am I supposed to do? Did you ever hear of a gent named John Blanding? Yes, he's a rancher, isn't he? He's a millionaire. That's more important. Why? Because he's coming in town tonight. And he'll go right to Sheriff Corbin's office. Then what happens? You walk in, the sheriff introduces you, and you tell Blanding you want to sell that white horse of yours. Now, he's crazy about horses, so we want to see the critter. Then you bring him over here. I'm to be the decoy for a kidnapping, is that it? <laughs> Something like that. What do I get out of it? The fat man says, $5,000. Mm. How do you know I won't double-cross you? We figure you're too smart for that, Tex. But just in case you get any ideas, I'm coming with you. Then why do you need me? Because John Blanding's a skittish customer. He don't trust anybody but the sheriff. And the sheriff don't trust anybody but the Lone Ranger. All right, let's go. Uh, just one more thing. What's that? Can you imitate that, uh, that yell of the Lone Rangers? You might have to use it. Oh, you mean... El Silve! Hoy! Well, doggone. Sounds good enough to be the genuine article. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you'll fool them, all right. <laughs> I hope I can fool somebody. <laughs> Come in. Good evening, sir. Boy, the Lone Ranger. I didn't know you were in this part of the country. I just rode in. Meet a couple of friends of mine, John Blanding and Mark Hamish. Uh, howdy. Howdy. All right. Excuse me, uh, this gentleman who stands so close to me is named... Uh... Gentry. Well, I'm sure glad to see you. We were just talking about a band of outlaws that are working around these parts. Outlaws? They've been rustling cattle, robbing banks, and running hog wild. Uh, I can't seem to find any trace of them. Well, that's strange. The only report I can get is that the head of the gang is a Jasper who weighs about 300 pounds. Somebody they call the fat man. That's nothing but gossip, Sheriff, and you know it. As the mayor of Sand Springs, I think you ought to organize a posse and run those outlaws down. It's a disgrace. Well, I would if I could, Mark. You know that. So the head of this gang is the fat man. Don't forget why you're here, mister. Oh, yes. Sheriff, I want to sell silver. Do you know anyone who might be interested in buying him? Sell silver? Is that the white stallion I've heard so much about? That's right, Mr. Blanding. Where can I see the animal? Well, he's in a stable on the edge of town. You want to walk over there? Yes, I'd like to. I'm interested in horse flesh. Can I come along? Why, of course, Mr. Hamish. 
about you, Sheriff? Shut up. Well, uh, no, no. I've got to stay here in the office. I'm going to line up that posse the mayor's talking about. I'm going to keep on talking about it, Sheriff, until you arrest a few crooks. Shall we go? Lead the way. It's a funny place for a stable. Come on. Open the door. All right, Winding Ranks. Hey, what the... Grab him, Lacey. Hey, what's the meaning of this? 50,000 in cash, and we know you got it in gold out at the range. This is an outrage. Shut up. So this was all a trick, huh? Sheriff Corbin has almost told me how honest the Lone Ranger is. I'm sorry, Mr. Blanding, but I have a gun at my back. Yeah. And just for your information, he's not the Lone Ranger. Not the... Well, I don't understand it. Oh, I guess you're all crooks together. You can understand that six-shooter Lacey's pointing at your head. And... All right. What do you want me to do? There's a pencil and paper over there on the table. Write a note to your wife. Tell her to come into town pronto and bring the 50000 in gold. All right. Well, Where's the fat man? He ain't here. Lacey and me do the work, and he does the thinking. I see. Here's the note. You won't hurt my wife? He won't hurt neither of you, if we get the money. Who's going to take the note out to his range? I'll take it. Oh, no, Tex. I'm not that dumb. You stay here. One of us has got to go. Well, I saw an Indian hanging around outside. Why not send him? Sure. That's it, Cass. Dumb redskin can't cross any of us. You crooks will suffer for this. The sheriff will track you down. <laughs> we'll be in Mexico with Blanding's gold before the sheriff knows what happened. I'm the mayor of Sand Springs, and Listen. I... Unless you want to get hurt. You'd better go over there by the wall and sit down on the floor. But I... Move! For a trillion. You can't tell Sit me. down. Keep quiet. I can't sit down. There's glass all over the floor. Anybody who's careless enough to shoot holes through a mirror... Or Shut up! How did he know? What are you gabbing about? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Well, uh, how about getting that Indian to deliver the ransom note? A good idea. All right. Open the door and see if you can spot him anywhere. But leave the door open. Don't think you're going to vamoose. Oh, you've got the wrong idea, Gentry. I don't want to leave. I'm uh, waiting to see the fat man. Uh, is the Indian out there? Yes, he's standing right across the street. All right. Walk over there and hand him the note. But remember, I'm watching you. I won't forget. Say, Case, I've been wondering the same thing Tex was asking where is the fat man? Yeah, he'll be here later, don't worry. Yeah, but what if he does... The Indian will take the message. Sure. May I ask what we do now? Wait, Mr. Blanding. Wait for your wife and $50,000. If she ain't here with the money inside of an hour, you're going to stop a slug with your head. You forgot one other thing, Gentry. What's that? We're uh, also waiting for the fat man. The hour almost up, Cass. Yeah, we'll wait a few more minutes. Oh, I know she'll come. You'll get your money. We'd better. Now, Mr. Hamish, you look uncomfortable standing over there. Why don't you walk up here by the table? I, I'm all right. There's no telling what these outlaws... They are. won't hurt you. Come on, you can stretch your legs. You walk very quietly, Mr. Hamish. How much do you weigh? Uh, about 115. Why? Oh, no reason. I just... Oh, that must be the woman with the money. Yes, Stay I'll Stay where her. you are. Open the door, Lacey. Wait. Stand still, all of you. I've got the house around. The sheriff! Why, you... Young Cass, the masked man's got you covered. Oh, my God! You asked for it. You put up your hand. Hit it up. I ain't arguing with the kind of shooting that masked hombre. You, you saved all of the sheriff. An Indian and a young kid told me what was going on down here. Then my wife told Don't me. worry, Mr. Blanding. That note was never delivered. Oh, that's a relief. But I thought that so you were... these two outlaws. Hey, tell me, what happened? I think we've located the headquarters of the fat man, Sheriff. Fat man? I was here earlier in the evening. I saw him. He's the one who ordered me killed. Then you... You murdered my double, Lacey, not me. I don't understand. I'll explain that part of it later, Sheriff. The important thing now is to arrest the fat man. He's the brains behind this gang. Well, sure, but there's no fat man here. I'm not so sure about that. Why, I've heard he weighs almost 300 pounds. That's almost twice as big as any man in this room. Did Tonto and Dan come over here with you? The Indian and the boy? Well, yes, I think they're waiting outside with some of my deputies. Tonto, Dan! Uh-huh. We here. We got it. We had to break into his house, but we found it. Isn't this what you mean? Yes, Dan. 
I thought it would look something like that. What in the tarnation is that? Looks like a bloated suit of clothes. That's exactly what it is, Sheriff. A large coat and a pair of pants that are cleverly stuffed with cotton. Why? So that an ordinary-sized man could wear them and look like he weighed 300 pounds. A fat man. You mean there never was a real fat man? Just somebody wearing these clothes? That's right. Well, I'll be... He wore this overstuffed suit and a false beard. He never spoke, even to the men who worked for him. He knew his voice would give him away. Well, I'd sure like to find that critter. You have found him, Sheriff. If we can just get Mr. Hamish, the mayor of Sand Springs, to try these on. I never heard of anything so ridiculous. Sheriff, I'm going on home Just now. a minute, Mr. Hamish. I think you could have gotten away with this trick for a long time if you hadn't been so anxious to come over here tonight. I won't listen but to you such... you were th- afraid that Gentry and Lacey might double-cross you. Run away with a Blanding ransom money. Sheriff Corbin, I demand... You that... tripped yourself with a poor memory. I would never have recognized you if you hadn't mentioned that the mirror over there had been broken by a bullet. I... No one knew that but the fat man. I... And I... if a man who really weighed 300 pounds walked across a floor as squeaky as this one, he'd make a noise. The fat man didn't. Neither did you. Mr. Hamy should sure... No, you don't. Like... I'm leaving Look here. Out, right... Sheriff. I'll get him. Uh, I'm sorry. I hated to do it. But it was either me or him. You shot in self-defense, Sheriff. You'll take care of these two prisoners? I'll handle them. Good. Come on, Dan. Otto. Adios, Adios Sheriff. So the fat man's dead. Well, at least we've got one thing to be thankful for. Two things, Mr. Blanding. The fat man's dead, and the Lone Ranger's still alive. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>